Welcome back, everyone, for our next video on creating a custom deep reinforcement learning environment for portfolio optimization. So part of this project, uh, what we decided to do was to break it up into pieces. In the first one, we created this custom uh, deep reinforcement environment, but we applied it to a toy environment uh, that was created uh, here for this tennis environment. And this was done in this particular repo. So we created this repo, and actually there was a series, part of this playlist, uh, with the first three videos, and it talks about how to solve that particular uh, tennis environment. Also lays a lot of the building blocks of creating Docker images, how to do a sensitivity study, how to do hyperparameter tuning on StageMaker. So these are all kind of foundational things, and I recommend that you have a look at these videos before we dive into anything here, uh, because it may become um, less clear if you don't have that background. So with that tennis environment uh, solved and a good kind of foundation, now we're ready to dive into actually trying to uh, solve a trading uh, job. So here, before we kind of dive into the real prices, because again, in the real prices, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of question whether or not we can actually solve that, we want to make sure that the system is in place. And so what we did was we created this uh, deterministic time invariant pricing history. Because the pricing history now is instead of playing tennis, you're effectively stepping through time uh, with those pricing. So to do that, before we get in there, there's actually some instructions linked here to how to set up on your PC if you wish to go and launch um, this um, notebook and run it uh, locally, and if you want to kind of try it for yourself. And I've actually already done that and just opened up here. It's a little easier to look at when you're running it on your local machine. However, you can look at it straight through GitHub, just uh, with the rendering, it's not quite as nice. So here what we did was um, we went back to the original repo that was done last year, where we actually created a set of real data based on real price history. So we went in and got a lot of price history. We also took some um, fundamental stuff from the, uh, the stocks, and we built up a, a series of signals. So there's um, price to earning ratios for the signals, um, several of the, the capitalization, volume. We even had some hot encoding for the days of the year. Uh, there was a, a large number of this, and you can see quite complex set of signals uh, for 10 different stocks, volume, all those types of things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that, that history, just reload it back in. Here we are, we're just loading the history that was generated previously, these signals, and you can see all together there were 71 signals, and we've got nearly um, uh, 3,000 days worth of data for all these signals. And if you go across all of them, you can see there's a simple moving average, 20-day simple moving average for each of the different stocks, right? There's 71 total. However, 11 of those were actually the hot encoding for the month of the year, so 11 months of the year. Uh, you don't need 12 because, of course, if none is selected, then it's the last month. Uh, so we have 60 that are specific to a stock. And what we're actually going to do here to create this synthetic uh, set of pricing history, we're going to take a we're going to ignore the um, – uh, the, day, the months of the year, and just take each of these signals for each of the particular assets. And then from that, we're going to generate some new pricing or delta uh, pricing. So this is kind of the equation here. So we have each of the signals, and then we have these coefficients we're just going to randomly generate. We're going to multiply by the signal on that particular day. Then we basically, this is the you know first order approximation to uh, the first order derivative, and then we have an approximation to the second order derivative of that signal. So you multiply by the signal on that day, its first derivative and its second derivative to get a delta change in that price for that particular day. And of course, to create that history, then we just sum them up right, as we go forward in time. So this is basically here coming here. We're pulling out some random coefficients, number of assets times the number of signals. Uh, we're kind of normalizing it again, even though it's random uh, because it's not a lot. We kind of recenter it to zero and we go and normalize it uh, by the number of signals because we're we're multiplying by many signals, so we want to kind of keep it uh, a fraction of one. Uh, and this is just a calculation to go and create the um, uh, the derivatives and just do a communal, uh, cumulative sum uh, as we go through time to get the price history. The other thing that we do here is go in and actually limit the uh, price history uh, because this is fairly artificial. One, we don't want to make sure that the prices don't go below zero. And also, we would want to have something where just because of the random choice of the coefficients, it you know goes off to a thousand times uh, a growth, right? So here we're just doing the limit, and at the end of the day, we print it out. So these are our new synthetic price history. And again, the reason why we're doing this 
is because all of these changes are absolutely dependent on the signals. And now the reinforcement learning is going to read those signals. And so its task is basically to, to go in there and figure out how best to uh, trade based on the signals. It, of course, doesn't know what the price is going to be the next day, but it has all these signals to be able to decide which way to go. So this is kind of our first step. So it's time invariant. And the reason why we say it's time invariant is because these coefficients don't change, right? As we move through time, none of the coefficients change. And uh, there is no random... Uh, component to this, right? It's completely deterministic, dependent on the coefficients and the signals. However, the signals themselves, you know, as you mentioned, are very complex. So it's a, still a very complex space. It's not an you know, extremely simple job. It has to try to learn this space, and then we'll have it step through time. So that is basically, and we can see now if we go through all the 10 uh, price histories, or uh, the 10 assets, if we kind of sum it up, this is the market growth over, you know, uh, a 10-year period. I think it's maybe even 11 year period it goes into 2019. Um, and you can see it still looks relatively sensible and it, that makes a lot of sense because we're actually building it upon um, the signals which themselves are a function of the real price history, right? So uh, there is a little bit of a rationale why the, uh, the price, price of history of the stocks and the market itself looks good. So once that we have that, we save that down into this CSV and then the next step uh, which I'll start with a different video. This is going to be a pretty short video. It goes and uh, packages that up and tries to launch it on, on SageMaker and try to solve this new environment. So the environment here is, again, this price history. It's going to see as it goes forward, and it's going to try to beat the market price, which is just uh, this particular growth. Okay, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.